Welcome back to the channel guys. So very, very exciting time for me right now. So this is essentially me taking the channel to the next level. Um, I am always very, very short on time. And so I work full time, full time dad to wife and two kids and I work full time and also do this on the side content creation because I love cars, I love electric vehicles, I love tech and I love everything pretty much to do with cars and tech and so one of the things that I always struggle with is trying to stay on top of the latest and greatest news for everything and so what I figured I'd do is I'd launch something new so I'm going to pull it up on the screen now uh, basically this is and welcome to episode one of weekly wrap with zapt or weekly wrap at zapt um, so for the ones that don't know, my name is Roland and I am a crazy car enthusiast who's jumped into the world of electric vehicles. So I've had my Model Y performance for pretty much a year and a couple of months and we've been following pretty much all the manufacturers um, for all things EV. So what I want to do in this in this type of episode um, or in this week's episode and ongoingly essentially is give you a couple of minutes rundown at most sort of like a quick digest of news that's happened over the past seven days or roughly within the week and so you can essentially watch this video and hopefully you get most of what's happening um, in the EV world or in the world of EV especially around Australia. Um, we'll continue to iterate this and improve this as we go so guys if this is the first time you're watching um, more than happy for you guys to drop a comment down below I'm really keen on getting your feedback because really this is the first episode and we can only go up and we can only improve from there. So, as I said, this is only going to take a couple of minutes and every week this will be, I guess, a weekly downloadable uh, digest for you guys. If, if you guys just want to kind of stay in the know of the really important or the big things that have happened this week. So, let's give it a go and yeah, let me know, let me know what you guys think. So, let's jump into it. So, First one here, so you guys would have seen Tesla Cybertruck. So it was in Macquarie Centre in New South Wales for a week. Um, over the last week, it's essentially left Sydney and it's made its way down to Canberra. You would have seen some videos of it rocking up in Canberra. This is essentially the two key photos. Once it's gone in, there's a video lurking around about it arriving and really tight space in terms of trying to get through the doors. But that's essentially there and you guys can see it sometime in Canberra. Um, ACT over the next couple of days. Um, I believe there is also a private Tesla Owners Club Australia event. Uh, I think it's on Tuesday. Um, so if you are a Tesla Owners Club Australia member, then make sure you register and go see it. If you're not a member, you can obviously or also join and you can also register for that event too. Um, I am a member myself, but I am no way affiliated or getting paid for anything like that. But um, as I said, if you want a private viewing, you can do that. Otherwise, just rock up to the store. You can see it there too. Uh, no, they're not doing test drives. It's really just a roadshow and they're taking it around Australia for everyone to look at. So that's all things Cybertruck. Next thing. With regards to the Tesla or 2024 Tesla annual shareholders meeting, you may have seen Elon present this slide saying pretty much we still have a long way to go and to replace everything with EVs. So three vehicles there, obviously, there's always been conversations about um, a Model 2 or a smaller, more compact type car or compact SUV. Um, obviously, also Tesla Roadster. Um, and then also uh, the bottom left one is the one that I'm very interested in. Looks more like a panel van of some sort. Now, we do know that um, Elon's always mentioned stuff about robo-taxi or having a transporter type vehicle to take people around or multiple people around. Um, so that potentially could be a commercial type van or it also could be a people mover that's also like a van. Either way, it's very exciting to see them do that because um, sliding doors are an amazing, amazing, amazing feature to have on a vehicle, especially with the tight parking spaces, at least in New South Wales, Australia. Um, it's fantastic so that, you know, if kids are getting out of the car or any adults getting out of the car, you don't have to worry about um, your doors getting dinged or whatnot. But either way, three new cars that have been, um, I guess, covered up as a teaser based on the annual shareholders meeting and there's everything else. And unfortunately, we don't get all of them in Australia at the moment. So hopefully one day we can only keep our fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get moving. So 
Tesla Model Y officially secured position as the world's best-selling car in 2023. So this was from Jato Dynamics or Jato Dynamics. Now for the ones that don't know, Jato Dynamics is a global provider of automotive data and analytics. So they've been doing it for over 40 years and based on all of the um, all of the estimations and all the, um, I guess, stats and analytics that they have, you can see on the top right there on the screen, what is that? 1,223,000 units. And versus 2022 is a plus 64%. They they have pretty much dominated the market. So it's crazy to see. And if you look at that, pretty much looking through the list from top down, the next one really also is another Tesla in terms of being an EV. So Toyota come, Toyota's got a fair few there that you can see. But from our EV side of things, it's literally Tesla dominating the market. So... Pause it there if you want to read any more, but I'm going to keep moving on. All right, BYD Atto 3. So BYD has secretly launched the Atto 3 with newer, lower prices within Australia. Interior almost looks all the same. Um, they do have a bigger screen, so it's gone from 12.8 inch up to 15.6 inch. And they've got some new added features or um, I guess software features in there like camping mode and karaoke mode. They also do now have a lower price. So it starts from about $44,499. Um, and then the extended range is from about $47,499 or be, um, before on-road costs. So really add a couple of thousand dollars to that. So it'd be borderline under $50,000 and or about $50,000 thereabouts um, drive away. So that's it for BYD. Let's look at the Mercedes Maybach EQS 680. What a world of luxury. Um, what can I say? It literally looks like a lounge. You, you look at that top left picture, um, you know, quilted seats, the seats, the seat reclines out and you look at all of, the, all of the screens at the front, it just screams luxury and very plush. Styling, subjective. Um, to me, that's essentially the Maybach design. So, you know, it is what it is, but some stats, let's rattle them off. So 484 kilowatts, 950 Newton meters of torque, zero to hundred in 4.4 seconds. Top speed, 210 kilometers per hour. Uh, cons average consumption, and this is, um, 20.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that's around Kia EV9 um, spec. And then you've got a NEDC rating uh, of 662 kilometers. So I say you'd probably get about 400 to 500 kilometers um, average. Now, uh, MRLP, so essentially the recommended retail price, $328,607. So it's almost $329,000. Obviously, you need to add on-road costs as well. Um, and yeah, so first delivery start July. There's also an optional first class rear suite package, which adds $14,900. And the Knight series adds $34,900. Now, I don't know specifically what that includes, but I would expect a whole lot more at that price. So there you go. That's the Mercedes Maybach. Okay. Hyundai Instar. So Hyundai has officially announced their A-segment subcompact vehicle, which is the Instar. It essentially outlines um, a targeted maximum uh, range of 355 kilometers. That's WLTP. It'll make an official debut at the Busan International Motor Show um, in late June this year, so sometime this month. Um, and it will be badged as the Casper Electric in Korea. So what do you guys think? Charging at the front. Now to me, the back looks like an Ionic 5, as you see on the bottom right. Those halo round lights reminds me of the current Mercedes G-Wagon, but uh, obviously nothing that um, outrageous. So let me know what you guys think. Let's jump to the next one. So Charge HQ, I made a post on X earlier on in the week. So Charge HQ is officially coming to an end for the free plan. And that's because um, essentially Tesla has moved their uh, third party API services and it is now charged or they will be, they are charging um, companies to use it. So therefore uh, Charge HQ is no longer giving their um, premium plan to pretty much all of the people that had the heritage or the early adopter plan. So they have it, $0 a month is the free plan that everyone will be moving to or else you pay $7 per month and you get the solar plan and you still get all the benefits to that. And final slide, um, 
updates from X. So this will grow as as time goes on. Um, but essentially, some key highlights that I've taken, just a couple of ones here. And so Elon has confirmed no Model Y refresh is coming this year. So if you were kind of sitting on the fence whether or not you should or should not order one, go for gold, make the order, jump ship, enjoy the car. It was already the um, most popular car last year and it should continue this year. There's no reason why it shouldn't. So yeah, that, that's it for the Tesla one. Um, our good friend Ryan has made a video on his whole week review with the Model 3 Performance funny video so highly recommend you guys go and see it and then uh tom our friend at uh, ludicrous feed um xpen website did open up for orders um based on a i guess a secret link or a hidden link earlier on this year but that was taken down hopefully um, based on pricing it's very very sharp to compete with the model y and uh yeah that really wraps it up now i don't know how long we've essentially spoken for but i guess um let me know your feedback. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe for more content. I'll look to try and do this every single week. We will be snappier. We'll be faster. But since this is the first episode, this is essentially the trial run. So as I said, give me your feedback. I'm totally open for it. And we'll see you soon in the next one.